<laughs> but we're going to have a little <laughs> shit. Internet apologists say. Shit. Internet apologists say. And boy, they be saying some shit, guys. So we are in Kansas City, Missouri, talking about a reverend that went viral because he ended up calling his his flock broke, busted, and disgusted, and his cheap sons and daughters because they failed to actually give him a Movado watch after he's been asking for this particular gift for over a year. But he's sorry, y'all. He's sorry. So this particular news story actually comes from NBC News. Um, it was actually posted on August 17th, 2022. And we're just going to get into it. I'm just going to read a little bit from it. So from the article, as a summation, a Kansas City, Missouri pastor who said his congregation was broke, busted, and disgusted for not buying him a luxury watch he wanted has issued an apology after his remarks caused a stir on social media. Carlton Thunderburk, I wanted to say something else. The senior pastor at Church at the Well issued an apology video Tuesday for the inexcusable remarks he made on an August 7th sermon. Though he, the context, though there is context behind the content of the clip, no context will suffice to explain the hurt and anguish that I caught that were caused by my words. I was spoken to those I have spoken to those I am accountable to and have received their correction and instruction. I have also apologized to our church who has extended their love and support to me. So that is the summation of what we're just going to go into. And we're just going to go ahead and get into it, guys. I would love to hear what you think, but I want to hear specifically from um, my bangers and mash gal, Phoebe. When you read this story, what did you think about it? It's Peter Popper on steroids. It's the modern yes. day mega church seed money bullshit. My grandfather used to refer to clergymen in a certain way, and he's right in this case. He always used to say, here comes the gravy train of an easy life. And without a shadow of a doubt, this is Jesus pimping. And I'm, and this is the worst kind of seed money, mega church, live off the um, vulnerabilities of other. If this guy was doing this to a, an elderly individual in a retirement home, like, you know, if for those of you that have seen Better Call Saul, if you were wandering around like James Morgan McGill going around scamming people, you'd be had up as a criminal. How this guy has not been had up as a criminal. Oh, 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 wait. I know why. Because we have deference to his religion. And, and, and that's the problem here. Deference to religion has allowed these whack jobs and skullduggery merchants to keep pilfering the pockets of the most vulnerable in our society. And that has to stop. <laughs> Gee, Phoebe, what do you really think? <laughs> well, um... I, I really can't believe that prosperity pastors are even a thing. I mean, I, I never heard anything like this uh, before I started looking into what happened around the world. Um, and I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding the state of mind uh, that a person has to be in to believe something like this. Because as much as I understand indoctrination, social pressure, uh, the lack of critical thinking. I, I, this specific uh, situation just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it, you, you, you can uh, imagine people who are grieving and they're going to see a psychic to, um, to hear about their dead uh, relative. And, and that's, that's understandable because there's the, the, the power of grief. But here, what is the, the, the power that drives those people to, to stay there and to give their money? It doesn't make sense. And amening him on Yeah, the, absolutely. And amening him on, on the video. But yeah, go ahead, August. 
So I agree with everyone. I think it is blatantly is just so obvious that this is just complete greed. And if I remember correctly, isn't one of that isn't that one of the deadly sins? Yes, Might be getting that wrong. Sins, because the seven deadly sins, you've also got lust and envy and vanity, which this this guy clearly is doing. He's lusting after his bravado watch. Yeah, he's he, uh, he envious of those who have it. His vanity is that he wants to go, hey, hey, hey. I don't think my Fitbit cuts it, but there you go. He wants to go, hey, 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 with all his vanity. Yeah, and I think for some of these prosperity prophets or pastors, they will sometimes ask for things where people like us who aren't under their, what you could even say, mind control or indoctrination, uh, we can blatantly see through this but they'll ask for cars or even like private jets and then they'll try to go around it by saying oh well it helps me do my preaching and whatnot this is a watch there's no there's no way he could switch this to be like well it's for my ministry which i've seen plenty of these uh greedy pastors do so i think that's just funny but the sad part about it it would be funny if there weren't people that would still forgive him and go back to his church. Because I think, um, Cynthia, if I heard correctly, he was saying that a lot of his community has showed support to him regardless yeah. of, of these these comments. So he, that's he, that's the saddest part. Me, he reminds me of um, Moonies. He reminds me of quite a lot of Moonies. For those of you who, know, who don't know who Moonies are, the South Korean church of indoctrination. This is what it sounds like, but it's just on a below the Mason Dixon line scale. And it really is quite disturbing that we have this hilarity, not as in ha ha hilarity, but this hysteria going around of, well, I've got the entitlement. I'm standing up here. You're not. You will do as I say, because I'm going to invoke the word of God. And it's just like, mate. Did anybody actually there, watch mate. the video? But did you all actually watch the video? Oh, I did. Uh, watch the video clip. Yeah. Um. Before he did. Oh because, yeah. Because like there. Yeah, okay. So like guys, like and, and it'll be like in the the show notes. But there is a video clip specifically of him berating his uh, the congregation about not buying him the Movado watch. But there's another video that will also be in the show notes where he was um apologizing for the things that he said of course the apology was way more somber right and you know way more demure if you want to if you want to think about it but it very funeral the, march very very, very yes yeah, crocodile tears drudge. it was a yeah. drudge it was an absolute drudge crocodile uh, but, dundee would have been impressed with those crocodile tears uh <laughs> but um bum ching that's not a knife but regardless of that when you look at the difference that's a spoon between, <laughs> exactly but when you all look at the but i I'm, I'm curious to to know like for the ones who actually watched the the video of him berating his congregation uh versus the video of him apologizing like what did what did you think cindy did you get a chance to see both videos uh only one which, which one um, did you watch the, the one where he was apologizing mm. what which... did you did you get sincerity vibes from it not really, not really. But it, it comes back to, to what I was saying. It's you 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 mock and, and berate people and then you apologize for but no it's 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 unbelievable either from the, the outside or from, from the inside. I, I I don't understand how those people can can believe him mm. and well, forgive I... him. Yeah. That was... Maybe well, and I also August. think that it's ahead, it's August. not that he's up. I don't think he's actually upset that he said it. I don't think he's apologizing for saying it. I think he would gladly still take a watch if they would give it to him. I think mm -hmm. it was a I'm apologizing because I got caught and now I'm getting negative backlash from it. And that is just mm -hmm. the most insincere well, form absolutely. of apology you can give. So I thought it was completely fake. Absolutely. I the agree. problem that he's got here well, not that he's got, is that the congregation have, is the congregation have stopped seeing him as a professional and they've stopped seeing him as somebody who is um, someone they're going to for spiritual advice 
They've seen him as a family member and he's getting away with it. It's like your mother or your father shouting at you, you didn't get me this, that and the other for my birthday. Well, hang on a minute. This guy isn't in a filial relationship with you. This guy is effectively a stranger to you that you just go into a, a building and you just listen to him spout off things. Hmm. If you were like in a relationship with him and you said, okay, I'll get you this, this Movado watch for your birthday and then you don't do it and you've built it up and built it up and built it up but no this guy he's just a just a grifting charlatan well you know i would want to bring a little context to this whole thing about when we're talking about a relationship between a pastor and a congregation specifically in the united states and the black church so you know kansas city i believe is roughly about 27 percent african-american uh, the uh, average income is around thirty-six, thirty-seven thousand dollars per Black family, uh, just opposed to uh, a, a over sixty-three to sixty-seven thousand uh, dollars uh, per white family, and w- there is a history of having this shepherd flock relationship, um, and not just like you know in the church period, but really integral in the Black church, you know, um, and. There to the point where like a pastor is seen as a father. I, I I know this even from experience for you know some other people who happen to go to churches like this, is that the pastor would introduce themselves to the congregation, especially if they happen to be um uh sister to women, women identifying folk, or and even uh sister to men, men identifying folk, especially if they did not grow up with a father that saying, I am your father. So when he was doing this whole berating, calling his people broke, busted, and disgusted, cheap sons and daughters, etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, it was like you have failed me as my child to show your appreciation for what I have poured into you as a spiritual father. Now, with that being said, what do you guys, like, what's some, what are some of your thoughts that are, like, swirling in your head? I, I will go down the line, August, Phoebe, and then Cindy. So I just want to say that people like this is why, you know, Christians or even any kind of people of faith are turning away from the religion because they are seeing these pastors uh, for what they are, even at best, they're just lying to you or telling you things that aren't true. So if you're already questioning and then you see stuff like this, you're like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe they aren't a messenger from God, you know, because I'm more moral than they are. So then I would start to question, hopefully, I would hope. So I think that pastors like this create atheists. So as terrible as it is, maybe that's a good thing that comes out of this, hopefully. Mm. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Phoebe, how about you? Give Phoebe some tea. Speechless. <laughs> She's speechless. There is an intentionality with the filial titling which is used here. Father, mm. sisters, brothers, etc. And that is to yeah. create this phony filial relationship that can be abused because if you've already got a filial relationship set up by society why not hijack it for your own ends you too can get yourself some grift going and it's just like hang on a minute you really are just a disgusting human being that is just living life large off of the hard work of other people I don't mean to cast aspersions on this guy, but I doubt this guy has had a full day's work in his entire life and has just drifted through life, bouncing like Flotsam and Jetsam does, going from place to place, collecting more and more things, and never actually landing anywhere fast enough so that he can then be told, excuse me, what the heck, what the heck are you doing? Get on your bike. And it's this kind of grifting nonsense and... Machiavellian charlatanistic narcissism that allows people like this to flourish. And we've seen it with mega churches gone mad on steroids. And now we're seeing it in the most egregious way where people are being told, hey, you know, my watch, need that now. 
or else you're failing me, your father. It's like, hang on a minute, mate. You are a horrible human being. And as Olga said, he got caught. He doesn't give a flying monkeys about the actual depth of this. He got caught. And that's it. Before Cindy, you chime in, I, I just like to shout out Phoebe for using the term filio, narcissism, Machiavellian, and flying monkeys in the same statement. That that has to be a record. I, I just want to I just want to just point that out. Just rolled right off the tongue. You know, just like mwah. <laughs> mwah. okay. And and Cindy, what are you, what are you, what are you um with with my uh, uh, con uh, context to content? What 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 are your thoughts? There's what went around. Um, August pointed out uh, the, the, the idea about, about morality, and I think uh, this is evidence why we need to promote uh, secular humanism so much, because we see the difference between vertical and horizontal morality. This is a case of vertical morality where because the person is on top, then they are trusted and loved and accepted and, and, uh, and forgiven by default because they are on top. Uh, and that's, that's a recipe for this kind of situations. We need horizontal morality, meaning secular humanism. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And, and, and the thing about it is, you know, when I, when I even think about it, and, and by the way, I, I agree with all of you, 100% of, of your thoughts and, and your commentary concerning this, whole subject matter with um, Reverend, Reverend Mavado, you know, that you're using this, yes, with the Fitbit, <laughs> you're using your position to abuse it in order for you to get gifts, for you to be enriched. And this is, and unfortunately, this is a action, a behavior that you would see in a bunch of different churches throughout the world that especially um, leaning towards the prosperity doctrine, right? The prosperity doctrine rather. And, and it is sickening. And especially like when I, I mentioned about specifically the city that this particular church is in with the, uh, what the congregation uh, demographic is like, especially economically, that you will berate these people because they did not get you a watch that could cost over three thousand dollars. Granted, it's not a Rolex, but you know, Movados are not a drop in a bucket either. I mean, like half the time, especially if you are a family that is living off of thirty-six thousand dollars a year, just just keep that in mind. You know, that's like an average family of four. The things that you're thinking about is keeping a roof over your head and also feeding your family and making sure that you can go to, back and forth to work. At, at your job where you are making $36,000 a year, okay? Which is absolutely nothing, especially with inflation the way that it is now. And as a pastor, as a man of God that you would call yourself, I would think that you would be way more compassionate to the people that you actually call your luck, your parishioners, your children, but you weren't. You were a horrible piece of shit and fuck you Reverend Movato for actually uh, uh, denigrating your congregation just because they didn't go to Sam's Club to get you a fucking watch that's my take on it it's predatory it's so very, predatory very Ex extremely pre predatory and and I look forward to the day where this is not a thing. I hope, you know, like Cindy was talking about, that we will have more people actually garner to critical thinking and also to uh, humanism and realize that people should not be treated this way. But I mean, shit, uh, the, the, the damn uh, God that uh, these churches are patterned off of are, is a uh, sadistic, narcissistic, you know, jealous uh, murderer. Uh, who most of the time between him and his people who he even says that are chosen often uh, display a uh, narcissistic demagoguery <laughs> abusive behavior and has done so all throughout the Bible. So yeah, fuck him too. <laughs>